What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick modeling tutorial. So in today's video I want to talk about how to use the number of segments in a circle or an arc in order to adjust the size and look of windows that you create using that face. If you're looking for more great SketchUp tips make sure make sure you check out my free ebook uh, 10 time saving tips in SketchUp at the SketchUpEssentials.com slash tips. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So this is more of a kind of modeling concepts video, but I wanted to talk about how you can use the number of edges in a curved segment in order to adjust the way that um, objects that you create with that look. And so I probably the best way to do this is I'm gonna start off and I'm actually gonna use the Pi tool. And uh, quite honestly, this is probably the first time I've really used the Pi tool for anything. So, and what that's gonna allow us to do is that's gonna allow us to draw a circle um, or an arc but it's filled in with a face. And the reason I want that is because I want to be able to push pull this up um, in order to create a curved face on the other side over here. And so a couple things about this first. So if we take a look at this face right now, um, you can see how it's made of two straight edges and then a curve. And if you remember in SketchUp, when you select a curve or an arc, it's gonna tell you the number of segments contained in it. So in this case, this arc is made up of 12 segments. And so I'm gonna make a copy of this over here using the move tool. We'll talk about this one in a minute. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extrude this up. And one thing to note is when I do this, I've turned hidden geometry on, so you can actually see the geometry that makes up that face inside that curve and so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna delete these faces out and probably this edge as well just so we can look at our curved face well you can see how in here because this curve was made up of 12 edges that means when we extrude this up the face that's created here is also going to be made up of 12 edges and so that becomes important if we come in here and we decide that we want to create anything using like um, if we want to use these uh, these uh, faces to create windows or something like that. So like for example, I'm gonna take this curve here and I'm just gonna split this up. I'm probably gonna make this about 10 feet high. But then if I go in here and I select these faces and I use something like the extension Lattice Maker. So if I run Lattice Maker right here and we'll go ahead and give it a white lattice material and a glass. You can see how that's gonna give me 12 separate panes or pieces of glass in here. Um, so that's gonna look different than like, let's say for example, we came over here and we adjusted the number of segments in this curve to something like 24. And I'll make another copy before I do this. So if I click on this edge or this arc, and I made this a 24 segment circle. First of all, you can see how this curve gets smoother. That's because this adds extra edges in here. So now, if I was to push pull this edge up, or this face up, and we'll erase this out, you can see how instead of 12 edges over here, this one has 24 edges. And so what that means is now, if we were to do the same thing and split this up, just by selecting this line and moving it up and then running the extension lattice maker on this you can see how you'd have double the number of panes of glass in here and so this is a lot of vertical mullions and so sometimes what you may want to do um, when you're doing something like this is you may actually want these to be wider not so narrow and so what you might do is you might artificially shorten this arc by reducing the number of segments in it so let's say for example instead of 12 segments i change this to six segments and we'll try something a little more fun with another copy in a second. But you can see how now this is made up of six different edges and while the curve isn't as smooth, that really doesn't matter because what we're doing here is we're using these faces in order to create our glass. So now if I was to do this one more time using Lattice Maker, and I will link to Lattice Maker in the notes down below, But you can see how now if I created these, uh, if I created glass using this edge, I have much larger panes of glass in here. So what you can do is you can adjust the number of segments in here so that your, your, uh, your curved wall is kind of broken up in more of a natural way. So this will give you wider glass. And uh, for scale, let's say for example that I move my default model over here 
you can see how if you were in a building with glass like this, it looks a little bit more realistic with the larger panes than the smaller panes like this. And you could definitely do something like this and achieve that same look if you really wanted to. Um, but you could even go so extreme as to reduce this to something like three segments. And then do the same thing. So you can see how the effect that you achieve using each one of these different segments or each one of these arcs is completely different. But once you master the idea of what the hidden geometry looks like when you extrude things like this up, you can start using that to generate the looks that you want inside of your models. So that's where I'm going to end this video. I actually have no idea if this is going to be helpful to anyone or not, but I think it's an interesting concept, and it's something you need to understand if you're working with SketchUp. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.